Welcome to Call to the News, the Watch It Played news show where I bring you all a light-hearted look at all the board, card and tabletop news that caught my eye over the past two weeks. And no one has any terrible secrets. The Crew is my favourite game of all time and it took home the Kenneth Spiel des Jahres Award this year so it seems as though a lot of other people really enjoyed themselves some cooperative trick taking too and certainly no one got very very angry. When I was mindlessly scrolling Twitter just hoping I'd see something to make me feel alive just for a second, I did! The Crew Mission Teeth Sea or Mission Deep Sea has been announced for 2021 and while there's not much information floating out there it seems to be a standalone sequel and my hope is just more of the same with a few added twists and I'm guessing that's what we were going to see. As it stands this is now my most anticipated game of 2021 by a nautical mile and I can't wait to see what's lurking beneath the water. <laughs> Everyone loves a good game show. Maybe even a comedy board game panel show, like my podcast. This game is broken, the comedy board game hey, panel. Matthew, I was looking at the schedule, and there's just not going to be time to mention both this game is broken and your other podcast, Death by Monsters. So just just skip the podcast plug and go right into the episode. Sure. But out of all the board games in the world, which is at least fifteen, just the last one I would pick for a game show is Uno. But well. Uno is being made into a game show. Now I think about it, the last game I'd pick for a game show is Clash of Giants Civil War. The first game I'd pick would be Pitch Car, with people strapped haphazardly to death machines with a crocodile bonus round and a Clask tournament. Should we be writing this down? Yes. Yes, we should. The story appeared in Variety magazine and describes an UNO game show in development from Mattel's TV division, which I would have called Mattelli, not important, and it's being brought to us by the Price is Right producer John Quinn, whose mother was that famous medicine woman from the 90s. And while it's currently not attached to a network, it seems to have money, experience and name recognition driving it forward. They describe UNO as being the most popular game in the world. Mm. And that it's a fixture in pop culture, making it an ideal franchise to build a reality game show around. And apparently the show will have four teams facing off to become the ultimate UNO champion, featuring audience participation, physical challenges and trivia. Okay, yes, I'm sceptical, but I'm not against it. My two biggest feelings are why not and why not pitch car. But you better believe I'll be tuning in to see the whole thing when it's finally on our screens. <laughs> So something you might not know about me is that I love Bob Ross, the public television icon who soothed us all while teaching us how to paint. Ideally, you won't know many things about me, but that's not important. I also love Magic the Gathering, and while it's been in the ether for a while with rumours and speculation, it's finally been revealed that a set of Bob Ross land cards are coming soon. And this didn't come in the form of an announcement, but after Magic the Gathering's online platform, MTG Arena, updated recently, one thing snuck in with everything else, and that was some basic land cards with Bob Ross artwork on them, and a version of the perennial card Evolving Worlds, which also had some new flavour text to go along with it. We don't make mistakes, just happy little accidents. So now that we know the cards exist, it's just a matter of how to get them. It's suspected we'll be in a secret layer product next year, like this year's Walking Dead cards. So next year, it looks like I've got more Magic the Gathering to be looking forward to. <laughs> Village War The Calamity has launched. It's a card drafting, resource management and spirit war game, which firstly looks just beautiful, but it also has theme and narration in a combination of history, folklore and myth from Nigeria and a fantasy tribe called the Igbo. And while this is just a genuinely good looking and fun sounding game, there is an added incentive to pre-order it from Nibcard and that's because the proceeds of the game are being used to run and pay for the Nibcard Games Caf in Nigeria, which is a hub for all the things that we as board gamers love. The cafe itself was crowdfunded in 2018 and their push to sell 500 copies is with the sole aim of keeping the lights on during the current hard times that we're all facing. 
Don't take my word for it though, because a link for Village War is in the description below. And if it looks like something that you'd enjoy, then you can pre-order it, knowing that the money isn't being spent on a, I don't know, pitch car inspired game show. So Matthew, I'm working on the pitch car game show, and what would you think of casting ourselves in it? For example, we have John Oliver play you, I'm thinking Allison Hannigan for Paula, a loaf of bread could be Rodney, and for me, John Cena. They're ace. Perfect. I'll run with this. In other good causes news, Desert Bus for Hope 2020 raised almost a million dollars. Okay, to understand Desert Bus for Hope, I have to explain a couple things first. Firstly, I love Loading Ready Run. They're a network of streamers slash comedians, but they are known for their often Magic the Gathering inspired comedy skits and Magic the Gathering pre-pre-release shows. They run Desert Bus for Hope, which is an internet telethon raising money for the Child's Play charity. And why is it called Desert Bus? Well, <laughs> Desert Bus is a terrible, pretty much unreleased game for the Sega CD, designed in part by Penn and Teller, challenging the players to drive a listing, unreliable virtual bus on an endless eight hour long strip of highway at 45 miles an hour between Tucson, Arizona and Las Vegas, Nevada. And you make that journey in real time. It takes like eight hours. When you arrive, you get one point, and then you head back. The game never ends. It's widely regarded to be the worst video game ever made. So Loading Ready Run play it for as long as donations come in. But in order to keep things interesting, they have live events and silent auctions, giveaways and contests, celebrity guests, as well as a lot of silliness. And since 2007, that silliness has raised $6 million for charity. Pointlessly driving a virtual bus. So this is really a congratulations and next year, if you see the words desert bus come across your screen, well, then you'll know what it's all about. <laughs> if you have any news you'd like me to talk about, then let me know at news at what it played TV. And I'll be honest, the weirder it is, the more chance I'll talk about it. Did you see a goat playing Twilight Imperium 4? Well, did you? I want to know about it. Tell me. Our final news story, other than Hot Topic have a bunch of Catan branded t-shirts. Yeah, Hot Topic have Catan t-shirts. I wouldn't even mention it, but they are designed by Quan Chai Moria, who is just one of the best board game artists of all time. Anyway, Square One is something that caught my eye on Kickstarter at the moment. What is Square One, other than a delightful pun? Well, it's a board game console that boasts it's able to meld traditional board games and video games, combining the best of what physical and digital games have to offer Essentially, it's a console slash screen that allows you to play board games digitally, but with real pieces combining the two worlds in a different experience. It helps guide you through the games when you need that. It creates animated environment. It tracks your points, reads your cards. You can save your game mid-session, play remotely with others who have another square one. It's interesting, it's innovative, and it does have some pretty big partners with Cosmos. You can also play Not Alone or Cthulhu Wars. I could personally see it being maybe a good tool for role-playing games. Will it be the next big thing? Who can say, but it's certainly newsworthy and it's already funded. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Hey Matthew, it turns out that John Oliver is not gonna be available. So how would you feel if instead your part was played by a partially disintegrated scarecrow? Oh yeah, I've completely moved on to my next idea life-size potion explosion. Do you know any chemical companies?